Welcome to Grand Design RV. <sighs> wow. So, you haven't seen us in a while, so welcome back to the channel, everybody that has stuck around with us. And for all our new subscribers, we definitely appreciate you coming back. Um, I'm so Dan. Yeah. Oh, I guess we can do that. I'm Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and together we're Compass Roads. Yeah, for the new people, if you haven't watched our very first video where you only saw like our talking heads, it was... <laughs> Man, we've been so spread. We're like our own worst enemy when it comes to doing... Um, the YouTube uh, videos and getting them uploaded. We have a lot of a ton of footage. We're just horrible about it. But this is already going to be a long video, so we really need to get into the knitting gritty. Okay, we just realized after editing this video that this video is way too long for one video. So we've broken it up into two parts. This is part one. So let the video continue. In this video right now because it's going to take place from May until August so it's a big time span uh, but it's going to showcase our our issues that we have with the roof um, some issues we had with the refrigerator and then our recent uh, issue which was the, uh, the tire the tire but we put it all in one video we still have other videos so it's, this one's going to be out of sequence from all of them so the roof um, Originally, when we, we noticed it, as you're watching the video, you're going to see the date pop up. It's going to show the date that we actually uh, found the issue. Um, and we initially thought it was warranty work. Uh, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. You've already heard me complain enough about some of the customer service issues that we had when we were calling Grand Design. This is when we're still trying to figure out if it was uh, warranty. Work, work, this work. Is, yeah, this is not about that now, so we already got past that. Um, if you saw one of our last videos where we uh, harvest hosted while we were in Virginia, Virginia at the alpaca farm, we went back and looked at our previous video from that because that was the day, the day that we left there. And if you watched that video, you'll see us as we're driving out. Um, I, I shot that with that drone. Uh, there was no damage. We looked at some other footage that we had from that day as well where we were close where the damage was at. There was no damage. Now, when we got into Williamsburg, we stayed at the Thousand Trails in Williamsburg and... Dan, you went in to check in. I went to check in. It was very tight roads in that particular park. It's very tight in there. If you've ever been in that, then you know exactly what we're talking about. But Kevin needed to go and actually find the spot that we had, and he usually takes a surge protector and makes sure that we have good power before we back up and, and unload and everything. So that's a pro tip for you. So you don't ever want to unhook, get your slides out, get leveled, and then hook up your power and come to find out <laughs> the power doesn't work. So... That was where we failed, uh, I think. Well, not doing that. That was still, we always still do that. Where I failed, I would say, is I had directed him. I was talking to him on the phone and I directed him to our spot where it was at, but I didn't go back and watch him. And knowing that it was such a tight campground in there, um, we think that's exactly where we may have snagged a, a, a really short uh, limb somewhere, and, uh, and it did the damage to the roof. Uh, and I guess I felt confident because there are bigger rigs than ours that go through those roads, same roads mm -hmm. every single day. So I didn't worry too much about them. I was just very cautious of staying directly in the center of the road. But when we did have the issue um, with, the, with the roof, they did tell us that, hey, go ahead and put duct tape over it. As you see in the video where Dan's pulling off the duct tape, duct tape. Because when we were filming that, that was for our next video that we were actually sending to Grand Design because we didn't know if the pictures when we took it to Beckley, because that per Grand Design, they said, get it to the nearest Grand Design dealership and have their warranty supervisor look at it, which we did. Um, and she took pictures, and that's when we put in our claim. And luckily, Beckley's RV was great. They knew how we were traveling, and they told us, hey, that Friday that we were actually traveling in that area, we could just drive straight in, and they would take care of us as soon as we got in, just to do the inspection. Which was cool, because we did it on a, on a travel day. It was in between our two campgrounds. So here's the film footage that we took for Grand Design, showing them the damage that was on the roof. Take a look at it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you uh, we've been told from the first day we noticed the holes that we actually needed to cover up with duct tape to prevent any kind of water from getting in there. We had it duct taped. Uh, we removed the duct tape when we had the 
roof inspected at Beckley's RV, and then we re-duct taped it again. So it hasn't been touched since. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the duct tape once again. We're ready to uh, cover it up again, but I'm gonna show you the damage that we saw. Okay, so here are the holes that are at the edge of the roof line. They're not on top, they're on the side itself. So this is, and you can tell that this membrane is loose. The whole membrane is loose on the entire roof. But we've got one hole, two, and the flap is still there, three, Now, what we've also noticed since the inspection is bubbles are starting up at the edge. Now, this is very loose here, but there's about 18 bubbles that are coming out within a foot of each other. So that was the issues that we had saw. And uh, as you can see in the video, it actually talks about, um, cause that was like the third or fourth time that we had taken the tape off. And that was when we were already in, uh, we were in Pennsylvania at that time. I think right. we were staying at, what, what was that? Gettysburg, uh, Drummer Boy. We were staying at Drummer Boy. So basically after we sent them the video, Grain Design came back and they went with their um, team of, of shop repairmen and they determined that that was damage and it was not a warranty covered issue. So our only alternative was to go to our insurance company, which was Geico. It's Geico and so we filed our claim with them and it actually went pretty smooth selling after that. Uh, we just had to set up our appointment with Grand Design to get the roof plate because I wanted it to go back. I like going over to that area anyway, but I wanted it the way I looked at it, nothing against RV dealerships other than what our people already have against dealerships with certain things. But to me, I think the people that put these things together and put the roof on every day and all that stuff that have that knowledge, I wanted them to do it. I did not want like a dealership that may do it, you know, once or twice every four or five months. You know, I want somebody who's doing this, you know, constantly. Every single day. So we called them and this is still in May. This is, we called them. Well, no, it wasn't May. Yeah, it was still May. Still May. So it was still May and we called and we got our appointment, which was July 21st. Yeah. So we carried on. We're like, all right. So till then they said, yeah, the duct tape will still work. So we carry on. And after that, we were in, <laughs> we were in uh, Pennsylvania for a few weeks. One was about three, a little over three. Yeah. Three we weeks. stayed at three different thousand trails campgrounds in Pennsylvania. And then we made our way up to New York and we stayed like four days. Then lo and behold, we get to Massachusetts, Sturbridge, Thousand Trails Park, which by the way, I would not recommend that park at all. So in the video when he's talking about the issues, which what was the issue? The issue was the refrigerator. All of a sudden it started getting warmer and warmer inside and we couldn't figure out why. So in this video, you're going to see him talking and discussing the, uh, the issue with the refrigerator. Now, before we got to Sturbridge, we actually did have problems in mid-March uh, oh, when we yeah. got to Fort Walton Beach, and we had problems with the refrigerator where the refrigerator just went dead. So we had to call an RV repairman uh, that came out to us and basically was a 5-amp fuse that was the problem. And which, 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 I'm going to go ahead and interrupt. Uh, that's another fail on our part, too, because if we just did some basic research, like just going to the, the many Facebook groups out there, I think we could alleviate actually calling them. But once again, coincidentally enough, the individual that actually came out, if you watch, was it, Enjoy the, the Journey? Journey to Life. It, yeah, if you watch their videos, when they had the slide toppers put on their momentum, 
<laughs> we didn't even put two and two together until afterwards. But those were the same individuals that came out that, like, yeah, you blew your five amp fuse. Yeah, it was uh, Billy Harris from RV Urgent Care. Here's his business card right here. But you can also see him on enjoythejourney.life replacing his slide toppers. Well, installing them, not replacing them. Installing them. But very friendly. Uh, he had a, it was him and, was it his son? It was his son. Him yeah. and his son, they came out and did it. So it took them no time at all. So go ahead and watch this part of the video that shows you what we were experiencing with the refrigerator. So yesterday I noticed the refrigerator was getting kind of warm. I put a thermometer in there and let's take a look at what it's right now. Sixty nine point one degrees. Well, that's definitely not good. We're going to have to see exactly what's wrong with the refrigerator. The refrigerator seems to be working fine. It's on light. I've got it set to nine, which is the highest cold for a nor cold. So let's go outside and see what's wrong. OK, so I'm on the side of the RV with the refrigerator right behind the refrigerator, and I've already taken off the two uh, covers that are both on the bottom and up on top those are the two covers that we use they easily come off with your finger and I have my ladder so what we want to do is we want to first check the fans that are on the top all right the first thing you're going to notice is on our particular rig, they have this um, particle board that is covering up about three-fourths of the gap in here. The reason for that is it serves as a chimney, and the way the refrigerator works is there's two fans that are underneath that will actually go ahead and move and expel the air upward, out, and over into that vented grill that we have there. You actually need this to get more of the air expelled out. So, I actually had to go ahead and try to remove it. They're stapled in on both sides. And you have to be careful. Uh, this wire has a little, I don't know if you can see it down there, is actually clipped into that piece of particle board. But we're gonna dangle this down a little bit and take a look at the problem. All right, here's one of the two fans. These two fans are just on a, particular ledge here uh, screwed into the back of the refrigerator and again all this fan does is it brings up all the hot air that's below the refrigerator and brings it out above the chimney and forces it out of the vent now I noticed this particular fan is damaged in fact the whole the whole blade system came out it's not even there anymore. So I'm gonna to have to find out where exactly that is. But we need to also check to see if this fan actually works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to find a temporary fix and put two separate fans that I bought from Walmart into here and see if we can get it to work that way. Now, I did wanna point out right here is where the two fans get their 12 volt connection and so it's really plug and play we are going to have to call Norcold and have them send us uh, two new fans because I think this is burned out it hasn't come on at all I also need to make check to make sure that this uh, 12 volt system is working now let's try to find out where this vent plate went into uh, the, the vent blades went into because I don't see them down here anywhere. But they had to fall down. So let's go down here. And take a look. All right, I see the uh, uh, fan blade is right here. It's loose, it's stuck back there. If you can see it, I'm going to have to move it around to get it out of our way. 
But the first thing I want to do is I want to unplug the refrigerator from back here. It is a 110 plug. And if you notice, this plug, even though it's 110, this is blocked out so you can't use it. So they're only using the one. Okay, immediately the propane kicked on. I'm gonna go ahead inside and turn that off while I work out here. Okay, so I wrestled with this. This is the fan, uh, it's kind of heavy, that was stuck way up in there. I was able to get it out. I did end up having to break uh, three of these fan blades themselves to be able to get it out, but I didn't wanna rip through any of the wiring that was on the refrigerator itself. So uh, obviously this fan is no good anymore. I'm gonna, it's gonna have to be replaced. So this piece is just junk. So I didn't mind destroying that. I mentioned earlier, there's only one 110 outlet in the back of the refrigerator that's able to be used for the refrigerator itself. So what I'm gonna be able to do to accommodate the two fans and the refrigerator is use one of these plugs here that plug in and um, I am not concerned that there's many uh, that there's much more voltage coming through than the refrigerator since those both fans are five amp each. Change of plans. This particular adapter does not fit in the wall because it is too wide. So I have another one. Um, this, of course, stands up, so it gives me the freedom to plug it in from the side. So let's go ahead and try that. So that's going to be my electrical setup for behind the refrigerator. Here is my temporary solution. I bought two fans at Walmart today. Uh, this is a four inch metal USB desktop fan. This was $5.88. And this is a five and a half inch rechargeable USB desk fan. And that is $8.88. Now the larger fan does swivel, it's on a base. So I can swivel it around. And I'm gonna use this because it's too big to fit in sideways or directly vertical and horizontal, but I should be able to put it in at an angle so it still blows the air out. Now this one happens to be a three-way or three different speed. And it, like I said, it pivots 90 degrees up and down. This one is just one speed only. This one has to be plugged in all the time. Both are USB cables. I'm also going to use this particular uh, USB connector that I've got or adapter where I can plug both of them in at the same time. And we're going to plug this back into the back of the refrigerator on that one adapter that I had plugged in. Okay, so this is the way we've got it hooked up. I've got the small five and a half inch blade. I'm sorry. I've got the small four inch fan set up here and right now all I have is it set right on top of the existing fan I'm gonna end up zip tying this down so when it travels it's gonna stay secure the five and a half inch fan did not work because I could not squeeze it in uh, to fit in here I'm gonna get another four inch blade fan and put it over here so I've got two fans going and like I said these are always connected they're not rechargeable it's just connected down the bottom and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting this board back up uh, they like to call it a chimney effect and so it comes up to right about there the bottom of these blades and then I'm going to go ahead and reinstall these uh, put in a screw so it stays in tight while it's traveling. And we'll try that out, see if that helps anything. Okay, so I went back to Walmart, got a second four inch fan and I'm gonna install it over here. I now have both fans put in here. I zip tied them up so that they won't 
move around during movement. They're both aimed up and they're gonna be able to expel air outside. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this um, chimney covering, whatever they wanna call it, back up. And then I'm gonna, I, I drilled two holes in it so I could zip tie them up to here to this bar. This is the finished job. I've gone ahead, zip tied those up to the length that it was. I'm um, over maybe half an inch from here. But that's the chimney. Both fans are working. I can feel them in here. And I'll put the covers back on. So that's the final product. I got them both hooked up. And so tomorrow, what we'll do, tomorrow's gonna be Monday, I'll be able to call Grand Design and Norcold, find out what the next step is for them to repair it properly. I'm gonna see how this works. Uh, like we showed you, it was 69 degrees in the refrigerator right now. Um, we'll see in the morning how well it works. If it drops down, if it does anything, or who knows, maybe it didn't do anything at all. But I'll let you know tomorrow. All right, today is Monday. It is the day after I did the uh, temporary repair on the refrigerator. As you can see, the refrigerator is still on as indicated by that little green dot there. Uh, if we look at the temperature, it's set for nine and it's on automatic, which is AC. So today is a travel day. It's gonna go to propane in about two hours, but I just wanna show you, remember it was 69? Well. Now, if you can see it, that's Ava. Now that you can see it, it's uh, 72.5 degrees inside. It's actually warmer in there than it is in here. So we're going to call Grand Design and see what they say. So that was pretty much the issue at that point in time. So we had food in there, as you can see, when Dan was like showing you the, I think it was like 69 degrees, we actually had to go get coolers because some food we end up, I mean, we couldn't eat all that food in a short amount of time. So we were buying bags of ice. Almost and, every single day. And we carry just a regular portable cooler with us everywhere we go. Um, it's with us when we travel. Um, but we end up having to get two styrofoam coolers as well. So on top of the roof that is not leaking anymore but we have duct tape on it now we have no refrigerator and we're living out of three coolers that we have to two of them are in the back of the chase vehicle and one of them rides in the rv as we're going down the road so did that stop our plans for the summer nope <laughs> nope not at all but one thing that we had to do um we had to get a hold of grand design again and norcold because different manufacturer for the refrigerator um long story short we were in Massachusetts for that. They said we said where we were going to be at, but we were in. We got to Maine, but our first stop in Maine, which was Wells in the, in the Ogunquit area, um, either we just didn't have no Norcold. There, there, there was a Norcold dealer there, but they couldn't see us for four weeks. Oh, that's what it is. So our next stop was going to be in Bar Harbor, and there was Ellsworth RV. And they were willing to see us the day that we actually arrived. So we set that up and we just, that was just going to be an extra week for us. Yeah, and that's when we were staying at Mount Desert Narrows, uh, just in in between, what is that town between? So you have Bar Harbor, Bar Harbor and, and Ellsworth. Ellsworth, yeah. So, And they came out and... Immediately saw the problem. So they, well, another problem, because as you've seen in the video, Dan showed that our fans were jacked up, so... But that didn't solve it. That wasn't the issue. So he came out. We already had the two panels off. You were gone somewhere, and it was I was there. He came out, and I went out and introduced myself. Obviously, we didn't have the camera because some people don't like being on camera, so we don't even try to put them in that situation or even ask them. Uh, that was like one of the warmer days that we had while we were in Bar Harbor. Anyways, he came out. He diagnosed it with, within seconds uh, because... Here's a picture of what he saw. Yeah. And as you can see uh, in this video, or in this picture, uh, he came out, he pointed to me exactly where it was still. He's like, I'm surprised there's any um, coolant left in there. So I asked Dan after the guy, because I hadn't been looking back there. You know, I, I take care of other things. That's like Dan's realm behind the refrigerator. So um, he's like, yeah, I noticed that. But he's like, I thought it was just something that may have leaked, which if you actually thought about it, it's not going to leak through the refrigerator. But 
We thought it was something that came out, but it smelled like ammonia, and we didn't put two two together. Once again, start doing your research when you have issues. Now, granted, we wouldn't have been able to fix that problem, but we no. could have probably diagnosed what the issue was. But it still doesn't help because he had to do what? He had to certify that for Norcold for the warranty work because, again, um, that refrigerator was only with us for five months at that point. Yeah, so it wasn't, yeah, it was still brand new. It was still covered under warranty. So now we've got non-warranty work on the roof and possible warranty work because he still submitted it, which it didn't be warranty work. But now... The problem was, was that uh, there's no way Norco could get the parts to Ellsworth for them to be able to repair it and install it for us before we were to leave. Yeah. So because we already had a date set up with Grand Design to get the roof repaired there, Grand Design said they would go ahead and repair the refrigerator for us and make sure all the parts that needed to come from Norcold were received by Grand Design prior to our arrival on the 21st of July. Which was great because we ended up getting, you were talking to someone from Norcold, you were talking to somebody Two different somebodies, right? At Grand Design. At Grand Design, uh, which was Emily and Stephanie. Phenomenal work, by the way, ladies. You were like, God sent you helping us get our, our rig repaired. And Donna helped us with the roof. Donna did help us with the roof, but Grand Design is where? It's in Middlebury, and we are still in Maine. We're in Maine and Bar Harbor, and mm -hmm. it was our first day in Bar Harbor. So until we could actually get the rig back over, we just found the best place to buy ice. <laughs> That's Every basically day. what it was. So now what you're going to see is when there was a lot of time in between because we were in Bar Harbor for what? A little over two weeks? Two weeks. Oh, it was right at two weeks because we were at a, a Trails Collection, an Encore Park. We left there. We stayed one night at your cousin's house. Then we stayed four nights at... Uh, while we were in New Hampshire for a little bit, but it was just gloomy and overcast, and we didn't really even get out. It rained a lot while we were there. And then we drove from there... To Niagara Falls. So, yeah, we were in Niagara Falls for about... And three nights, I think. It was yeah. three nights, and we were actually going to bypass it, but we decided not to, and we went, and I'm so glad that we did, because if you haven't went there, that place is awesome. Then we left there and went... To a thousand trails in Ohio. And then we stopped and we did a harvest host at our favorite, one of our favorite wineries, which is the Paper Moon. Shout out to the Paper Moon, and we had to drop Rody one off with his brother in Vermilion, Ohio, because we only stayed one night there. And then we beat feet. We woke up, beat feet, and went straight over to Middlebury, and uh, did our whole thing, which was we had to go in and check in. So you have to go in and check in with uh, the service center. And that's where we met Emily. Yeah, in fact, here is a picture of the sign that they've got for the campground out there. They had eight nice spots that we talk about, but we want to show you the sign in case you ever have to go there. And here is another sign where they actually tell you what they kind of expect in the morning, how to get your vehicle ready or your rig ready for them at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and, and they start early. Okay, like I said earlier, this is just part one. We're going to end it right here. But don't worry, we're going to be back with the rest of the saga. So be sure to tune in next week for part two. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell and we'll let you know the next time another video comes out. Until next time, where will the road take you? Life is a winding road no telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights